And hello everybody. I just want to do a video on station trading because hell, why the hell not? And it's, uh, I just want to get out of the way, really. It's kind of a boring topic, but it's something I do all the time. And since this is an LP, I kind of want to, like, go through everything that I do so you know. Oh, I sold some stuff. Um, but anyway, uh, let's just get going. Station trading is a very simple thing to get into for a new character to do. Most people have an alt that station trades, so their main character or even another alt. Hell, I know people who have, like, five alts. It's ridiculous. What the heck? But anyway... Uh, I know people who have an alt who just station trade, and you can make a lot of money doing it, but it does take a lot of time investment to actually start making a big return on your ISK, but it, I think it's worth it. I mean, The more work you put into it, the more you will get out of it for sure. Uh, Jita is the number one place you want to do station trading in. However, if you are not very uh, set on sitting at your computer for long periods of time, trading constantly, you can try another trade hub. Other trade hubs in the game, like Dodixie. Dodixie is half the size of Jita, which means you have a lot less competition. And then there's like places like Amar and Heck and stuff like that. Uh, in Jita, if you have buy and sell orders up, you're going to want to be checking them probably at least eight times a day if you want to make any money. Um, if you're trying to make a quick return on some stuff, you're going to want to check it even more frequently than that. You can actually spend an entire day just station trading. And uh, you can make a lot of money, but you are spending a lot of time just sitting in the station looking at numbers. So be aware of that. If it's something you want to get into hardcore at all, it's kind of a lot of work. I'm not that hardcore into it. You'll see from my skills. We'll go into the skills next. Um, there's some skills you should get if you get into trading. Um, I don't have very hardcore skills into it, but I do have 681,000 skill points in it. Even though this character is only 2 million skill points at all. So it is a very big part of this character's life is station trading. Uh, the basic thing you want to get, duh, number one, is trade. Uh, starting out a character, you can actually see, um, where's the easiest way to see this? In mm, the market, if you go to orders, uh, you'll see orders remaining, 25 out of 53. I have 53 available orders because of my skills. I think you begin with only 24, 25, something around there. Maybe 30. Maybe it's 30 now. Where uh, you, you only start with a certain amount of maximum open orders and you have to skill up to actually get more orders. Trade will help you do that. Uh, trade gives you... Four more active orders with every level, and it also is a requirement for other things. It's a requirement for retail, broker relations, and marketing. Uh, broker relations and marketing are things you need. What else does it have? Uh, oh, yeah, and uh, accounting. So you want to get this up to level four because accounting is actually very, very good. Um, level five will allow you to have more orders, but actually it's not too vital because uh, at level two of trade, you unlock retail. Every level of retail gives you eight more orders. So if you get this up to level 4, you have a ton of orders. Um, I think that's all the order bumping ones I have. So level 4 in trade and level 4 in retail gives you 53 maximum orders. You can uh, skill up retail to level 5, and actually that's required for wholesale, where every level in wholesale will give you 16 more available orders. It takes a long time to train, but I think after fully scaling out, you can have over 100 open orders, which is great. It's really good to diversify what you're trading, but it also takes a lot more time, and it's harder to make money per thing you're trading, really, if you have so many orders open, especially in a high-volume place like Jita. So I keep it at around 53, and that's fine for me right now. I might get more later, but for right now, I'm I'm cool. I'm all right with that. Uh, as you can see, I'm actually training into exploration on this guy right now. But anyway, um, so trade, retail, wholesale if you're hardcore, pretty much. Uh, the next thing you want to get is stuff like accounting. Uh, that is proficiency at scoring away the odds and ends of business transactions, keeping the checks books tight. The checkbooks tight. Uh, each level of skill reduces the transaction tax by 10%. Uh, if you look at transaction tax, I have a 90%, uh, 0.9% of the sales value right now. The more you skill into it, the less it goes. Uh, I believe it starts at one. I actually don't remember. Uh, what a great tutorial. I don't freaking remember. But basically, get accounting leveled up. Uh, whenever you make any transaction, whether it's a purchase or a sale, uh, there is a transaction tax taken by the NPC, like middleman or whatever, I don't know. Uh, that means he will take a percentage of your order, and it's a tax you have to pay, and it reduces the amount of profit that you can make by doing this. So, leveling up accounting is a very, very good. Uh, I believe there's something that makes that even better. Um, no, but there's margin trading. So, you need to level this up to level 4 to get margin trading. Margin trading is crazy cool. It's also very dangerous. Uh, what that does is whenever you make an order, a buy order, uh, it takes that money that you've committed to that order and puts it in escrow, kind of like a uh, 
a purgatory with your money. It's like a fake bank. And they hold on to it. But with uh, margin trading trained up, actually read this. It's a long text for a reason. The ability to make potentially risky investments work in your favor. Each level of skill reduces the percentage of is placed in market escrow when entering an order. Starting with an escrow percentage of 100 at level 0. So you have to pay 100% of the buy, buy order that you create right off the bat, or straight out of your wallet. But each level of the skill cumulatively reduces the percentage by 25%. This will bring your total escrow down to approximately 24% at level 5. So every time you train this, it'll reduce the amount of ISK you have to give up front for a buy order. By the current amount you have to give, it'll reduce it by 25 more percent. Which is great. So as you can see, I have uh, in my buy orders, I have 280 million ISK in buy orders right now. That's because I'm buying a Raven for my other character. Uh, and then it says I have an additional 171 million ISK to cover, uh, and I have 100 million ISK in escrow. So my buy order total is 280 million, but I've only had to pay 109 million up front. That leaves my wallet open for smaller trades or a whole heck of a lot of other trades. The problem is if you make buy orders and people try to sell to you, but that would put you in the red, bad things happen. Don't let it happen. Being in the red in EVE is the hardest thing to get out of. It is the worst of the worst thing you can do. So don't write checks that your ass can't catch, but this is a great way to keep uh, the money train rolling and have a big diverse portfolio of products that you're trading. Margin trading is very good. And uh, yeah, it's great. Uh, let's see. Oh, I forgot to mention about accounting. Pretty much every character should maybe have something in accounting because uh, tax actually adds up out after a long time. Broker relations. Uh, whenever you make a transaction, you also pay a broker's fee. Uh, mine's at 0.8% of the order value right now. The more you level this up, the lower it gets. That's another thing you should have. You make more money per uh, investment that you make, which is great. Contracting is good if you want to make a lot of contracts. It's not really pertinent to station trading. Uh, day trading is remote modification to buy and sell orders. Not really pertinent to station trading, but if you want to do regional trading with like shipping products from station to station and all that stuff, you can get into that. Uh, I got it for other reasons, but uh, I'm not going to get into that. Uh, marketing, uh, same thing as, as day trading. This is selling remotely. And I think this is modifying orders remotely. And that's about it. There's another one where you can sell remotely. All you really need to know is you need trade, retail, accounting, broker relations, and margin trading. L leveled up pretty good. That'll help you out a lot. Let's get into actual trading now because it's been a minute. <laughs> All right, so... Normally, when people come come into the station, uh, they're lazy. They go out missioning for quite a while, and they gather up all this junk, and they're like, I'm going to haul all this crap to Jita and sell it because they pay the most. And they do. G in Jita, people pay the most. It's just fact. Except for some stuff. Some uh, mining materials and crap they don't pick crap for. But that's a different story for another time. Uh, so, they come to the station like, huh, I want to sell. A whole butt ton of uh, prototype ECCM radar sensor clusters that I happen to have from uh, from all my missioning. Uh, I'm just going to right click it and sell this item. And I've never hit the advanced button. So uh, people are buying these. Uh, uh, people, I'll, I'll get this much money. I'll get 18339 for this. I'm going to sell it. Boom. They hit sell. And a lot of players don't even know why it costs that much and they don't know why it's 70.85% below the regional average. That sounds bad, right? That sounds real bad. Basically how it works is whenever you're looking at market information, you only see the information for the region that you're sitting in at the time. I am in the forge right now. So according to the forge in this region, this is 771 ISK is 70% below this region's average. And yeah, it is. That sucks. Uh, I wouldn't actually just uh, lazy trade this at all. I'd probably actually go to a different region altogether. But anyway, uh, most people just hit sell and don't know where it goes. It goes to the highest buyer of that item. And uh, if you look at the market details here, hitting the main defend glass brings up the actual market detail data. And uh, <laughs> never mind all the blue, I'll explain that in a minute. But uh, that's why 77107, the highest buyer, if you actually look at the sellers and buyers in this, and you uh, hit the price, and you want the arrow to be pointing down here and up here. That'll make the highest or uh, the highest buy and the lowest sell order on the top, which is what you want, by the way. Um, but yeah, it'll sell to the highest buyer automatically if you just hit sell. Boom! I'll actually buy it for myself, or uh, yeah, I'll buy it for myself if I do that, so I won't even lose it on my inventory. 
But uh, yeah, that's where it goes. And then how station traders make money is they take that laziness of people just selling stuff and they um, they mark it up. And they mark it up as high as people are willing to buy it for. Right now, people are willing to buy it for uh, $4,999.99. Everything in blue, by the way, are my orders. There's multiple orders here. That was just uh, me screwing something up. Don't worry about that. <laughs> it actually helps you. Uh, if you have multiple orders going, whenever you create an order, you have to pay the brokerage fee and stuff. So canceling an order, you don't get that money back. So uh, I just got more and more and more and kept on making more and more sell orders. That's a great way to uh, save on that money. But also you have a limited amount of sell orders. So they're kind of stupid as well. But I was I was uh, in a hurry. Let's put it that way. But anyway, so I buy these for 771.07 ISK and I sell them for $4,999.99. That is a great markup in general. Um, as you're trading, people are going to continuously basically uh, V for the highest buy and the lowest sell price to try and move their product faster than you can to make that money right then and there. The reason they want to do it quickly is because the longer you wait, the higher the buy price will go and the lower the sell price will go over time as people are, like fight over sales and it purchases respectively. So the faster you go, the faster you do go and get your product moved, the more money you will make in the long run and in the short term in general. So that's why people are always fighting for that. And once again, this operates on people's laziness. When people come into a station, they're not going to go into the market and go, uh, oh man, these are 4,999 bucks, but I could place a buy order for 771 and then place a buy order and try and bid me up. Because I'm sitting here, my character is not leaving the station ever, and I will outbid them immediately, and they'll get mad, and outbid me, and they'll outbid me, and then I'll outbid them, and it'll go on for probably about 15 minutes, and then they'll give the hell up, and they just buy from me anyway. <laughs> uh, so that's that's how station traders have to be. You have to be patient, and you have to have a lot of time on your hands. But anyway, uh, some of the things you should set up in your market is, like I said before, you should have the arrow pointing up in price and pointing down in buys, so the most relevant information is at the top. In settings, if you want your orders to be blue, you have to click this. Mark my orders in the settings. Um, also, uh, you can there's options to filter by the skills you can use and CPU and power grid that you can use in the ship that you're currently flying, and filter by your untrained skills. Make sure those are all off, and make sure automatically refresh market data is on. Uh, what this does is... If you have these filtered, if you're trying to buy something that you can use for sure, you want all these on. Uh, but we don't care as a station trader. We don't care what we buy and sell. We don't even care if we know what it is, honestly, most of the time, sometimes. Unless it's something crazy, like if a patch comes through, we need to know, oh, it's going to screw everything up. Let's not trade in that because something horrible is going to happen soon. Um, but anyway, normally the market just looks like this. If you have orders up, I have orders up right now. You can't see them. Uh, so you want to hit mark my orders and you will see the blue. And it makes it a whole lot easier. So, how do you tell if an item is worth trading? Riddle me this. Well, it's actually pretty simple. Most people will just go right through the market here. And um, this is usually not open. And they'll go through item by item by item by item using a certain set of criteria to tell, hey, is this item worth trading? And I'm going to tell you what that criteria is right now. Uh, let's just go into some items that, uh, let's go into a random one first. I have some picked out, but let's go into do a random one here. Um, missiles, heavy missiles, faction heavy missiles, and um, this screen is useless. You want to actually click the item and see the actual information here. So, what does this item look like? It is selling for twelve hundred ninety nine ninety eight, and people are buying it for one thousand seventy. I am bad at math, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to open the calculator here, and I am not going to use the num keys because last time I did, I had to restart the recording because it screwed up my recorder. So I'm going to use the row of keys, which makes it so much harder to type. Um, $1,299 divided... Hopefully this button doesn't screw anything up. Okay, it didn't. <laughs> divided by... You want to divide the uh, lowest sell price by the highest buy price. And enter. So, looking at this, it is... 21% markup right now. Yeah, you could you could potentially make 21% markup on this if you place the buy order now and nobody bids you up and you get all those items and then sell them all without anybody bidding you down in the sells. So you always have to factor in the and you also have to factor in your brokerage fee and you have to factor in your uh, transaction fee. So 
what you want to do is know that at 20% with my skills right now, that is actually more like a 15%. If you don't have a whole lot of skills trained, that's actually more like a 10% markup. And 10% is not worth your time. Honestly, it's just not. Unless it's a super high volume, kick ass, high velocity, things are flying up the door, you're trading like hundreds of thousands of them at a time, it is not worth your time to make 10%. Uh, this item's 21% with my current skills. Uh, even with perfect skills, I probably wouldn't trade anything that's not at least 30% because that'll factor in if there's a crazy market fluctuation or something and it covers your ass. But anyway, this is 21%. It's If it's very high volume, it's maybe worth it. How do you tell volume? You hit the price history. Boom. <laughs> so if you look at this, this is really weird. Um, wow. This is actually a crazy item. So if you look here at the bottom first... Ignore this, ignore this right now. We don't, station traders, honestly, you don't really need to know anything about this besides if this right here, if like the last few days has been going straight down. If it's going straight down, you're in trouble and you shouldn't actually ever touch that item until it goes back up. But anyway, uh, the bars down here are the most important. And this little number here, this is saying that, man, okay, so let's go to the five day resolution. You can change the resolution of this graph. So over the last five days, Oh man, it's really hard with an item with this much volume, but as you can tell from here, on the 19th, which is freaking today, someone sold a crap ton of these. This is like two, maybe three million of these just today. Wow, that's a lot. I don't know if they sold, like if someone dropped off a load, it's probably, what it probably is is freighters dropping it off from uh, factories and stuff from out in the world. And Jita's the one place you want to sell your stuff, so hey, it's a great place. So someone dropped off a bunch of these, and there's a high volume today. But yesterday, not so much. Day before that, yeah, it's okay. It's like a quarter million. I mean, this is like actually not that bad. It looks like a small bar, but if you look at the resolution on the side here, the reason it looks all funny is because this is so high, and it changed how much is shown here. So it kind of screws up the graph a little bit. If you look at a month resolution, more on average, like quarter million of these come through the station every day. And that's what that means. Volume is just how much of the product comes in and out of the station every day. Um, this is actually a pretty, pretty good moving uh, thing. So if I were to buy these, if I decided, hey, this is actually a pretty good deal. If I were to buy these, I would buy half of the average volume to ensure that I would buy them and flip them very, very quickly. Um, you could actually go up to... I wouldn't go as high as this. I'd go up to maybe like the average daily volume. You could buy that many, but then selling them won't sell as like drastically unless you are the one making every single buy order and you are the one making every single sell order, which is actually impossible. So, because <laughs> that doesn't count for people just wandering to the station with them and selling them, you know? Yeah, this is a pretty good item. I would, uh, if I was going to buy them, I would probably only buy like maybe 10, 20,000. And look, this guy's doing the same thing, 20,000 right here. And you can flip those for a 21% profit, but if you get any competition, and with all the taxes and transaction fees and stuff, it'll probably end up being more like 12%, 13% profit, somewhere around there. And uh, that's a pretty good item. That's pretty good. Let's look at some not-so-good items just to get a feel for it. So, Capital Gravitron Pulse Generator, boom. Look at that. All right, so... Let's get our calculator out to see what kind of margins are on this particular item. So right now, this item is selling for uh, 568999 divided by uh, 5000 And that gives you a profit margin of... Uh, that's a hell of a lot. That is a... Uh, I don't even know, man. That's a ridiculous margin. Put it that way. That is fucking crazy. That is insanity. That's so much money. I should buy these. No. Don't buy these now. Why? Look at the freaking price history, you numb nuts. Look at this. Nobody buys these. Nobody sells them or buys them. In six... Freaking a year. In a year. They were traded on one, two, three, four, five days. You are never going to get this. If you place a buy order, it's going to be pretty cheap because it's a low price. But no one's going to sell you it for that. Most people actually just make these. Uh, you don't have to know that, though. You can just look at this and say, hey, whoa, there's, like, nothing trading. Nobody's trading these in the past five days. How about the past ten days? Nobody's trading them. How about in the past month? One day. <laughs> and it was, a, it was a, quite a bit of them, but that's because someone made a bunch and sold them all. And then they went away. So, 
Yeah, that's probably why the average price is so high because someone actually sold them. Look, people actually own a ton of them and they're trying to get rid of them, but nobody is buying them. And these people are really, really sad. <laughs> it's just not a common item that nobody really wants to do deal with. So do not trade that. I'm removing that from my watch list. By the way, if you ever, ever look at an item in the actual uh, thing here, where are those missiles that I was looking at? Was it Scourge I was looking at? Hmm, maybe Inferno? I think it was Nova. Uh, if you just right click and add to your market quick bar, you have your quick bar here. And uh, this will let you sort items you're currently trading. So if you are going to trade something, you just add it to your quick bar and you can check the prices really quickly just by clicking them once. You can actually make folders by here and, uh, you know, organize stuff. I have ice stuff, the things I'm trading, the things I'm waiting on, a different station I'm trading in that actually I don't ever visit. So I probably shouldn't even have that anymore. Actually, I'm going to just delete that. <laughs> uh, exploration stuff here. Yeah, it's a great way to actually keep yourself organized. But anyway. You gotta be very, very careful what you're gonna trade. This item in particular is something I just grabbed a minute before I actually started recording this. Um, if you look at the volume and stuff, yeah, this is trading. There's about two million, maybe 1.7 million every day on average. Price is trending upward, which this might actually be a great item for uh, maybe not immediately. If you look at the year resolution, this might actually peak around here. If you're really lucky, maybe around here. So this actually might be a good speculative investment, but I don't deal in that. Speculative investment is when uh, the price of something is low for a while and starts to trend upward, like at, over time, and then you want to buy a crap ton of them, wait for like a month, and then sell them for a, a huge profit. But I don't deal in that because I want money now. Uh, but this item in particular for a station trader, <clears throat> sorry, is a. Uh, Looks pretty decent. Uh, let's look at the margin, because the margin is important. It is 458 divided by 426. It is a 70% mark, a uh, seven, sorry, 7% 7 markup, which means you're not gonna make any money because of your taxes and stuff. So not not even wanna trade. Huge market velocity, no profit, don't do it. Remove that from my list. I do not want to see you again. You are an a-hole. Dual 250mm prototype Gauss gun. Once again, want to get across. I don't care what these items are. I just kind of picked them out of random, and I'm going to evaluate them by the criteria established. So, this is 129,000 uh, versus 86,000. So, man, this got to be a shortcut for the freaking Eve calculator. I just never... F I hate the thing, so I don't use it ever. Uh, 129. It doesn't have to be too accurate. So, 129 divided by 86... That is a 50% profit. That's pretty good. Uh, that's actually very good. Um, after your taxes and everything, and after you you know, fight for prices with people after a while, you'll actually probably end up making out still around like 40% profit on your investment, which is very good. That's excellent. I'm gonna actually pin this so I don't lose it. And uh, yeah, let's go to the price history. Yeah, this is going for about um, maybe around 75 a day. So you don't want to buy, I would probably buy 25 of them, maybe, and sell them, and then not touch the item again for a while and see where the market goes. But this is a pretty good item to trade. I like it. It's got decent volume, not great volume. You're not going to flip these very, very quickly, but if you have extra orders open, uh, it'd be a pretty good item to do. It'd be pretty good. Uh, let's go to another item. Actually, I'm, I'm not actually going to trade in that because it's not high enough volume for me. I like to flip things quick. Um, explosive deflection field. Uh, 1.2, oh, see, this is another problem. If you look on this list, the lowest price is at a station 11 jumps away. That does not apply to us because we are a station trader. So the price we want to look at is the station price. Anything that says station next to it is in your station. So you don't really care about prices that are nearby because we're operating on laziness. Someone who comes in here who wants to buy one of these is not going to go three jumps away to get it for 1.5 million when they get it right here for 1.56 million. They're just not going to do it. They're lazy and I wouldn't do it. If you come to a station to fit a ship, you're going to fit a ship and leave because you have somewhere to be. You have something to shoot. So yeah, no one's going to go 11. Maybe someone will go 11 jumps away to buy this, but that would just be to come back and sell it here if this price gets above that. <laughs> and that's a different kind of trading. That's like, you know, actually hauling stuff but station traders are lazy people and we dwell on laziness but yeah this is a pretty uh this might be a pretty good trade let's look at the numbers it is uh 1.5 million 1.56 million so 150 uh, 156 oops 156 
divided by 128. Enter. That is a 21% profit margin. Um, you know, that's borderline for me. You'll end up only making a 15% profit, but that profit's like 100,000 isk, maybe more. So, like, that's kind of worth it because you're making, like, in raw isk value, you're making a lot of money. And who knows? Let's look. Let's see if it'll sell quick. Yeah, they're moving uh, around 200 a day, maybe uh, on average more. Uh, you could buy 100 of these, and the price is actually ticking upwards. So, uh, yeah, I would, I would buy, like, maybe 100 of these. Hell, I'm going to buy 100 of those right now. So let's get into a buy order, shall we? So we're going to click the buy order, place buy order right here. And uh, what you want to do is look right here. And this is going to give you the price for the uh, lowest sell order. So if you click buy here, you'll buy one, and it's great. But you're not making any money, and you're not going to retrade it. You're, what you want to buy it for is around this price, specifically that price plus one penny. Because if someone comes in, they're going to automatically sell it to the highest buy order. So you want to be the highest buy order. So we're going to be at one, two, eight, six, four, four, three, point zero, zero. I usually just type in the uh, highest buy order at the time. And then you put your mouse over the price and use your scroll wheel up one. And that'll add one penny to it. Uh, I'm going to buy probably 25 of these. Uh, that's 32 million. Once again, I have margin trading, which means I don't have to pay all that up front right now, which is fantastic. Um... You can even hit remember settings and re sure remember all your settings. Uh, if you place a buy order as well, you want to make sure this is at station. You can change this to region, but then whenever someone sells one to you, they can sell it to you in any station in the region and it sits there. And that means you have to go fly around and pick them up. And that sucks. <laughs> it sucks a lot. So don't do that unless you want to get into actual station to station trading, which is something completely different. And we're just focusing on one station. So let's buy. Boom. We are now at the top. Order for 25, and uh, after a while, people whoever comes in here and he has some of these that they want to sell, maybe they shot someone and this was on their wreck and they don't use these or don't want these, uh, they'll just come to Jita and drop it off, and uh, I will get it. Or, uh, more likely, this guy will, you know, bid me up, and I have to keep fighting over it until eventually someone actually sells those. But it's a high, this is a high volume product, so I'm pretty confident that I will get one of those pretty soon. Not right away, not during this video, but soon. I'm going to put that in my trading folder. Yes, fantastic. Uh, let's go to Fleeting Warp Scrambler. Uh, let's see here. This is a pretty good. I can actually tell that this is a... Uh, oh, what's 20 divided by 15? I'm so dumb. 20. Divisible. 15. Enter. Oh, yeah. That's 33%. So that's a great percentage. That's actually really good. Um, also, if you look at this product... Trades are around about 500 a day. That's really good. Price is stable. Yeah, it's a great product to sell, uh, to trade. But this is a weird thing about this. When you station trade for a while, you'll learn very soon that some items just don't sell very often. Uh, volume does not take into account uh, the difference between buys, like sells and trades. Volume is just how much you, it combines buys and sell orders. So with this particular item that I had, I actually traded in this already. Um, I filled my buy order very, very quickly. I got a crap ton of these. I got like maybe 200 in a day. And I could not sell them forever. It took me like a week to offload the things. Because no one buys them. No one wanted them for some reason. <laughs> maybe it's just because the price is too high. I don't know. But this is an item that I don't want to trade in anymore. And that's something you can't account for just by looking at graphs and stuff. That's just an experience thing. Which is why I always recommend thing like oh hey half the volume is something i should be able to buy i usually buy even half of that if it's something i never traded in before if it's not on my quick bar i uh i just dabble in it a little bit to see how it how it is and if it doesn't sell very quickly i don't go there anymore so yeah there's that but anyway uh i want to show you one more thing before i shut the hell up which i'm sure you're sick of me already is uh navy cap boosters oh hey it cleared up never mind uh, so, okay, let me just tell you about this then, because they, someone did this to me on this particular item. Uh, I was buying, I was selling these for, um, actually less than this. That is very strange. I know what this guy did. This guy pulled a maneuver. This guy's freaking maverick of trade. What he did was he placed a sell order for two pennies 
above the buy order. Meaning, if you wanted to out, if you wanted to beat his sell price, you would have to put your sell price one penny above the buy order. And if you wanted to beat his buy order, because he had a buy order, uh, you would have to put yours one penny above the buy order. Meaning, whoever was, I don't know, it's it's a kind of complicated thing. But he's basically brute force in the market in a way to drive prices below his lowest sell price that was equal to the highest buy price. Therefore, he bought all those. And now he has a sell order that's way higher than it was before. This, these were selling for like 50000 He bought a ton. Look, high volume. And when you have high volume, you can push people around. Especially since he probably has a ton of freaking money. So I'm going to put my, bio, my sell order back up. So let me make a sell order. Let me show you how this works. You just right click and hit sell. Don't use the basic. Hit the advanced. Make sure you're looking at the market. I'm already am, so it didn't pop up. Duh. Uh, and you want to make your sell order approximately one penny below as opposed to buy, where you want to make it one penny above. In sell, you want to make it one penny below. So 71537 uh, point zero five, And then roll your mouse wheel down to make it one penny below. And uh, yeah, that should be good. I'll make 18 million. Uh, that is basically double what I invested, which was like 9 million, which is fantastic. And let's just uh, sell those. Boom. And like I said, in GTA trading, I have a trade. This is all the things I've been trading recently. Uh, that was actually on my wait list. I'll take it off my... Ooh, was it on my wait list? It should have been. Weird. Where is that? Oh, well. Uh, if you ever want to look at your orders, they're just in here. And I had that order selling Navy Cap Booster. Double click. Drag that to there. Yeah, I don't know why I left my list. That's really weird. But anyway, uh, if you want to check your orders, you just have them all on a list. And you just click through them. Boom. Look, my, uh, my buy order is too low. Right click. Modify. Double mouse wheel up. I'm above them now. Boom. I'm, I'm on the top. There we go. ECCM. I'm on top. Extra later, ECCM. I was actually just selling those. I don't want any more. Oh, no, I have some. Look, I'll sell that crap. Boom. And, uh, oh, I stopped selling them because look at this shit. This guy's doing the same thing. They're being bought for 13000 Now he's this guy's buying for 18000 And uh, they're being sold for 19000 which is no longer profitable. So let's just not sell. Uh, so, yeah, I'm going to put that into my wait list. And that's why I have a wait list. It's for stuff that I don't really want to be trading right now. Even though I have some, I don't care if I sit on it because it's not. That's why I don't buy so many, so I can just like hang out with them. Uh, that didn't go into my freaking wait list. There we go. Anyway, um, Fernal missiles. Uh, we're not buying them anymore. Let's uh, mouse wheel up a few times. Boom. And this is all you do when you're station trading. You find great items. They can give you. This isn't a great item, by the way. Don't trade in ships if you want to make money, unless you have billions. <laughs> uh, I just need those ships. Actually, the Manticore right now is a very good trade. You make like $5 million per. That's not that bad. Um, medium. And you just right-click. Modify. Uh, this guy went 63. And if you want to trick someone up, if you want to be on top longer, you meet them where they expect you to be. Uh, he would expect me to be at $0.63. Cents, but then you go back and change a 9 to an 8. And yeah, I'm not going to make as much money, but he'll probably F up and not realize that I changed that number. And by him not realizing, realizing that I changed that number, he will uh, he will do what I am doing, which is right-click, modify, and scroll his mouse wheel. And uh, not notice that he has to keep scrolling because I'm like 20 bucks below you, buddy. And then he'll stay on top longer uh, and he'll screw people up unless they're paying out really close attention, which would be impressive. Man, I've been out done already. Look at all these. Man, I think that one guy owns all these. He probably has multiple orders going. Nah, anyway. Also, some things about trading on the weekends. Uh, it gets crazy on the weekends. I usually... A lot of people buy up a lot of stuff during the week. And just only watch their buy orders. And then on the weekends, they sell everything. <laughs> so, uh, during the week, buy orders are a lot more competitive. And during the weekend, sell orders are freaking crazy competitive. It is insanity. Uh, there's also a peak peak hours and stuff in the market that'll depend on where you, you know depend it doesn't depend on where you live because eve time is standard it's like negative one gmt but uh it's around 1600 and then it depends on the day um 
Wednesday is usually really slow, but every other week is busy. Friday is a crazy. Saturday is a fucked hard crazy. <laughs> and then Sunday usually actually calms down. Sunday night especially, it's really calm. And the market kind of stabilizes again as uh, people actually cancel a lot of orders, which is really wastes a lot of money unless they actually fill them all but it seems to me like people place a crap ton of orders and they just cancel them all on sunday evening maybe it's because they're trying to play the market somehow i don't really understand that high level of uh pvp market pvp gaming but it's kind of crazy uh, how the market fluctuates on the weekends so i'm just uh changing these orders and uh you'll notice that one guy beat my bids on the cap boosters, but I can't actually change them, and I'll show you that. Uh, in the cap boosters, if you, I already placed this, so every time you make a change to your order, you have to wait five minutes before you make another change, which is why it's useful to have multiple orders going on a single item. So if you are, if you change your order, and then a second later, a guy beats you, you can take another one of your orders and beat him, and then he has to wait five minutes, five more minutes to beat that second order. And you can kind of just leapfrog your orders over him. And uh, let me see if I have, I know I have that one. Where's that one where I have multiple? Okay, so say this guy went uh, 4999.98. I would change this one to beat him. And then if he, he then beat that one and went 49997, I would change this one because each of these is independent from when you change them. I could change this one and then this one immediately after and then this one immediately after that. So you can leapfrog your sell orders and even buy orders if you want to be crazy, but that's absolutely insane. But you can leapfrog your sell orders to stay on top longer as long as, as, long as they have like decent volume in each order. If you have one, uh, if you have one in one of them, they're probably not even going to bother outbidding you for one. So that's the thing. But anyway, uh, that's pretty much everything I have to say about station trading. If you have any questions, uh, let me know and I'll make another follow-up video to go over that stuff. But it's been kind of long and my throat hurts. So thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.